In this video, I'm going to be testing a Renault 21 GTS Symphony. Oh, this is going to be good. So I've taken over the car park, um, a, a local, um, well, local in Peterborough, um, garden centre, because this seems a, ver a very fine location for testing such a vehicle. So this is a Renault 21. Um, it's a GTS spec, which is kind of mid mid range. Um, but a Symphony Special Edition, which gets you these gorgeous alloy wheels and um, obligatory graphics of a symphonic nature. And it also gets you a really interesting stereo, which we'll get to in a minute. But lovely styling on the Renault 21, I think. One of the most attractive Renaults ever made. Uh, styling by Bertoni, one of my favourite design houses. Um, almost as good as Ruggiero and his Ital design. But um, yeah, one of the more interesting Renault 21 facts concerns the wheelbase. This is perhaps the only car um, that was available with four different wheelbases. And that's because uh, the 1.7 litre uh, petrol had a transverse engine driving the front wheels. Um, the two litre petrol and the diesel, pardon me, have a longitudinal engine and because the longitudinal engine needs more space they had to stretch the front end correction the transverse has the longer wheelbase so um, that gives you two wheelbase changes and then the saloon and estate use different um, wheelbases as well so a full mix of engines on both four different um, wheelbases and i believe it's torsion bar rear suspension still on these so um, it might mean there's actually a different wheelbase each side as well. How exciting does that get? We have very sharp styling and um, perhaps not all that individual. So it's maybe why you don't see so many today. Uh, I can see a bit of Renault 9 in there, um, but generally it kind of stands alone. You've got the unusual lack of a grill at all. There's just an opening down here in the front bumper. Um, so a very clean shape, very aerodynamic. I mean, I used to have a Renault 21 Monaco with the two litre engine, and that would do 35 miles to the gallon quite easily. You'll note we've got a sunroof. It's a slide only. It is currently slid back. And uh, this remarkable car, I'm too, far too close to the Neem Valley Railway. Uh, this remarkable car has covered only 15,000 miles from new. Um, it was part of Renault UK's own press fleet for a time. Uh, Sodicam Electronic Protege and um, was then sold to noted um, classic car journalist or now modern car journalist um, Keith Adams, currently editor of um, Parker's. But uh, it was sold to the MD of Kelsey Media, a good friend of mine, and uh, he couldn't resist it. Uh, added it to the Kelsey fleet of unusual vehicles, uh, which includes many vehicles I've driven, um, including the um, Land Rover Discovery uh, V8 and uh, the Saab convertible. Uh, they, they always have plenty of cars for me to play with. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favorites. I, I've known about this car for some years and it is just delicious. There are a few little dents and niggles here and there but the paint is still in fantastic condition, as is in the interior. And without further ado, I think we should probably crack on with the interior. Some nice chrome door handles, a few cobwebs here and there. But yeah, look at the interior. We could do with a bit of a clean, but um, it's just absolutely untouched. I love this. The fact there are blanking plugs where the um, window winder would normally be, because it's got electric windows. Uh, they couldn't be bothered to use a different door card, so they just fitted blanking plugs. A rare case of where more luxury gets you more blanking plugs. If we jump aboard, the colour scheme is very 1980s Renault. Um, just trying to get the wheel perfectly straight, there we go. So lots of yellow going on, and stalks here. Uh, nice little short action, you twist to put your lights on. And um, back and forth. Oh no, it's just a pull towards for your main beam. It is interesting that that one is your side lights, but that's your side light position. Then that's your headlamps. 
So, um, and there's a little siren telling me I've got the lights on there. Um, we've got a five speed gearbox, lovely little precise action on that. I love the angular little um, gator here, electric window switches, one big speaker in the middle, uh, which is backed up by little tweeters and some very good ones in the rear shelf as well. Maybe I'll try and show you those later on. Um, lots of space, very spacious in here. I quite like the steering wheel and um, You've also got column controls for the stereo here. That's the wiper stalk, which looks completely different to the indicator stalk. I quite like that. A few push buttons up here for the hazard lights. Oh yeah, that's a nice noise. And we've got a manual choke for the carburetor here. So that comes out like so. That was quite a neat um, design, I think. Heat controls, very like a Renault 25, sort of laid flat, but easy fingertip control. And uh, yes, the pièce de résistance of the Symphony, quite a posh auto reverse cassette deck. Uh, it's got good sound quality. I've turned up the bass because why wouldn't you? Uh, I have a feeling Radio 2 will be talking mostly at the moment. Oh, need, need um, ignition for that. There we go. Then yeah, that's boring. Please go and find us some music. There you go. Find some music. Now, I think that, is that loudness? Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it's, it's not coming across, but the sound is good. I better stop there before I get into copyright claims. But yeah, we've got various controls here. You'll also know we've got an electronic dipstick. That's what this control here is. Um, so that's telling me the level is somewhere in the middle. Uh, we get the glow plugs blank, even though we haven't got that. Uh, I'll just show you the choke light. And there's the choke light over there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all good times. And I do like the fact there are lights to tell you when your lights are on. That's really useful. And we've got central locking control there. So lovely, clean, concise, quite stylish dashboard, I think. Oh, here in the back, it's um, lovely. The sound is somewhat deadened by this roof panel. It seems quite thick. Uh, I think that's to make way for the um, sunroof. Uh, you can just see it rising up again there. So that robs a little headroom, but very light and airy. I've got quarter lights behind me, a good size, huge side windows, but I keep fit in the back, but that's a nice angle. Nice angle, nice action rather. And uh, knees alert. Plenty of room here as well. Um, let's move that mat out of the way. Yeah, I can't really get my feet under the seat. Um, so that reduces some of the space. But you know, I've got an armrest down here and um, it's a nice comfortable place to be. I can't remember, yeah, I think the seat does fold. It looks like it's got a 60-40 split on it. That was pretty unusual for a saloon car in the 1980s. Um, it might have been a concession to the fact there was never a hatchback of the first generation 21. Um, such was the outcry in France, but they did respond with a hatchback because we're losing so many sales to Citroen. Um, so the Renault 21 hatchback phase two, very popular car. Um, and let's just do that. Yeah, a good solid thunk of a noise. Um, full approval is granted. Let's have a nose at the engine. So I managed to completely forget that it's a forward tilting bonnet, um, which um, foxed me for a moment there. But there we go, a little 1.7 litre engine. Maybe 1.7 is not that little. But look at the space to work on it. Um, that's, um, yeah, pretty good. Uh, I had the two litre fuel injection, which was not quite so joyous. But I mean, look at this. Um, there's just acres of room. All very, um, yeah, good for the servicing. Um, cam belt, um, of course, um, but uh, fairly decent access to that as well. And there's a, one of the front suspension towers. Uh, brake master cylinder on this side, it's good to see. We get to see the wipers in all their glory. Uh, when the bonnet is dropped, it doesn't hide them at all. Brilliant, well done me, top observation. And there we go, the boot is certainly a good size. This um, Haynes manual for the Renault 21 looks utterly lost in there. Lovely low lip as well, so not too difficult to lug stuff in. And uh, I've got one of the seats folded down to um, show how you get the access. But that's as flat as it goes. So it's not quite hatchback levels of practicality. 
uh, the seat doesn't tumble forward, but nonetheless, it allows a bit more flexibility. But again, look at the condition. I doubt anything's ever been in here. I wonder if we can have a nose under here. Oh yes, look at this, beautiful condition. What a lovely car. Well, I must say the um, rear light panel, the rear lights generally, um, a gorgeous design. I love the um, smoked lenses over red. I think that's a really smart look and um, something copied by other manufacturers, Citroen with the BX facelift, Vauxhall with the Mark III Cavalier and the Mark II. The Mark II actually went to smoke lamps as well. The Mark III very late in its production run apart from the GSI. Um, but yeah, the condition really is very tidy indeed and looks good. It even looks good underneath. That exhaust looks absolutely brand new. Maybe it is because low mileage cars tend to kill exhausts. But yeah, Renault and Elf used to be a strong partnership in much the same way as Citroen and Total. But um, yeah, fold the seat back up. And just get the seatbelt out of the way. Yeah, the seatbelt goes through that runner. There you go. And that's done. Of course, the downside is that allows people to get straight into the boot. So that's not such a good point if they break in. But I shall get the camera set up. We shall go for a drive. Oh, almost forgot to show you interior lights. And a map reading light. Oh, fancy. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I shall begin. Uh, we start, we'll give it a little bit of throttle. There we go. We, oh, I was a little low um, because um, I've left it sitting for a bit. Oh, I've just remembered I wanted to do um, wiper demonstration, but the screen wash doesn't work. Uh, but it's okay, I'll have a cunning plan. It's a cunning plan, but only um, caused quite a lot of water to come into the car. So that was a definite success. Interesting that the intermittent, oh no, there we go. There's the intermittent. So that wiper blade's knackered. Um, and um, we have got a bit of a triangle of doom going on here. That's a little unfortunate. Uh, I don't remember mine doing that, but maybe it did. It was a long time ago when I had my 21 Monaco and it had a uh, much more power than this 1.7. I have entirely forgotten how much power this actually has. So um, I shall drop something in um, somewhere about there, maybe, uh, telling you how much power it has. And, ooh, Mark III Cavalier, a little mini F plate with those reverse lights. I don't think so. Uh, manual steering, although to be honest, it's so light, you don't really notice necessarily until you, can, you go very slowly and you're like, ooh, this is heavy. I will say that the soundtrack is very, very Renault. Please do not crash into me. So the exhaust has a bit too much burble. Maybe it's stainless steel. Lovely, comfortable drive. These seats are truly magnificent. Uh, I had the Monaco with leather seats and they were very good as well, but I do prefer a bit of velour, um, or at least cloth. Might not be full-blown velour. It's certainly very, very comfortable. And um, yeah, I like the driving position a great deal. There's nowhere to rest my clutch foot, but there is room to sort of dangle it next to the pedal, which um, is acceptable. Yes, not a quick car, I think we can safely say. Let's just do that window up just a touch. Might open the rear. Oh yes, there we go, that gets rid of the buffeting. A useful tip, if you've got a sunroof, open one of the rear windows, it does remove the buffeting. 
So the Renault 21 Savannah was the estate version and very popular they were too because you could have three rows of seats all facing forward. But yeah, this car feels so tight and fresh as it should do really with 15,000 miles on the clock. Lovely precise gear change. Very pleasant indeed. And unsurprisingly for a French car, it feels like it would be quite the cruising machine. Ideal for blasting up and down auto routes. May not have the sheer grunt of a two litre, but um, it's, it's no slouch. Steering perhaps needs a bit more of a turn than you might expect. Power steering would um, give a more precise feel. Uh, maybe not so much feel, but a more direct um, steering response. So less turning. But um, yeah, it's fair to say it behaves very well. And there I say it, much as I love an Austin Montego, um, I was always gutted that my dad didn't get one of these. He got um, a Montego instead. Oh yes, that's that's a lovely ride. There's a bit of float to it. Because, you know, Citroen are often lauded as the masters of ride comfort. But actually, Peugeot and Renault um, also knew how to do it. And they managed to do it without the complication. Um, I'm a man who m maintains that a Renault 16 is the thinking man's DS. Um, just as comfortable, none of the complexity. But, you know, here we are, we're in top gear, doing 40 miles an hour. Feels very relaxing. Don't worry, faster roads are coming. Yes, I think the Renault 21 sold in good numbers. It was quite popular with fleets, taxi drivers like the diesel version, and there were some sporty um, turbos as well. So, 21 slightly quietly forgotten, and that's a real shame. These cars may be a little short on character, but they're so, so capable. Uh, this one is driving beautifully. I will say the electric window switches are just a bit too far away. I have to lean forward to operate them. That's not ideal. Same with the heater controls are a bit of a stretch away and the stereo. Although, of course, I do have my fingertip control for said stereo, which is quite a useful thing. But, oh, this is just wonderful. The 21 was eventually replaced by the uh, Laguna, which has a terrible triangle of doom. It's like they weren't even trying. Trying nice low revs. If it pulls cleanly. Oh, bit of a hesitation there. A slight flat spot. 1980s carburettors generally I don't think are very good. I think 1960s ones are better. Something went wrong in the 70s and manufacturers forgot how to make carburettors. But then fuel injection was coming in and um, there's a lot to be said for fuel injection. I bet this can't do much more than 35 mpg at a guess, which is why I was getting out of a two litre fuel injection. Yeah, I've just chosen this road because I know it's a bit rougher in places and um, yeah it's just floating along. Now, I'd say, uh, I mean we're keeping up with this modern Audi, but I'd say it's a car you can drive briskly but I wouldn't say it's necessarily rewarding but I'd say the balance is about perfect. It handles tidily enough but um, it doesn't compromise ride quality. Uh, I bet the ride's considerably rougher in that Audi. Look at that, having to steer more than I expected because of the manual steering. Because the way you make the steering light enough um, to be no effort is you gear it down. So, um, yeah, you have to turn a lot more than you might otherwise expect. Yeah, I mean, it feels nimble enough. And, you know, it's still in top gear, not having to bother to change gear. That's all good. We're up to 60 now, uh, about 2,700 revs, 
so uh, motorway speed it's going to be quite relaxing right i think we'll do a mild acceleration test i'm not going to absolutely hoof it because it's too nice a car for that i'm not going near the red line but just give you a sound of load enough really and that's uh, with a self-imposed 4500 rpm red line just before we finish up I should take you for the keys it actually has remote central locking well, unfortunately it needs a new battery so it isn't actually working but um, that's the ignition key uh, quite a funky style and uh, the door key uh, it actually has the shape of the Renault badge uh, upon it, which I quite like. Uh, there's also a big, chunky, heavy um, Renault keyring as well. And you'll note the fans are running, even though the keys are out. And that's something these models do, um, because there are heat soak issues with the carburetor. So there's fuel vaporization. You can't actually, um, yeah, you can't actually start the car again. So it runs the cooling fan to blow air over the carburetor and stop that happening. I say it blows air over the um, carburetor. The fan is here and the carburetor is under there. And maybe that's one of the problems that all the heat gets stuck there because the exhaust manifold is directly beneath it. So it's not a cross flow engine. Interesting. So that was the Renault 21. I've had enough of waiting. I'm just gonna finish up now. Um, yeah, the, the quietly forgotten rival to the Citroen BX and the Peugeot 405, uh, the Renault 21, might actually be better than both of them. And that's a Citroen man saying that. Um, I think they're absolutely superb cars, very comfortable, very practical, and um, stylish in their own way, not, not a look at me sort of a way. But um, I don't think that is an unattractive car in the slightest. I really like uh, Bertone's um, starting touches, those smoked rear lights. Oh, gorgeous. And far better in pre-face lift form, I have to say. So I shall say, um, thank you very much for watching this road test. Don't forget you can head to the Hubnut store for all the merchandise and goodies, mugs, t-shirts, stickers, whatnot. Uh, Patreon is a thing, patreon.com slash Hubnut if you want to support us that way. Um, but otherwise, yeah, thank you for watching and I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. What a noise. Seriously, can you shut up now? <laughs>